BBC News, hello, I'm Gareth Barlow. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has said his government is interested in a complete and transparent investigation into crimes committed by Russian forces during their occupation of Bucha and other cities. Speaking after visiting Downs near Kiev, he said his government was doing everything possible to identify the Russian military involved and warned there was already information that the number of victims of Russian forces could be even higher in other areas. A spokesman for the U.S. State Department, Ned Price, said Washington had been asked to assist. At the request of the Prosecutor General of Ukraine, the United States is supporting a multinational team of international prosecutors to the region to directly support the efforts of the Prosecutor General's War Crimes Unit to collect, preserve, and analyze evidence of atrocities with a view towards pursuing criminal accountability. The terrible death and destruction wrought by the Kremlin's forces is going to continue as long as Putin continues this senseless, unprovoked war. President Biden has led international condemnation as more evidence emerges of the alleged atrocities committed by Russian forces in Ukraine. He called for President Putin to be tried for war crimes. He said that what had happened in the town of Bucha, outside Kiev, was outrageous. Moscow's ambassador to the UN says Russia will present factual evidence to the UN Security Council demonstrating that Western statements on events at Bucha are lies. At a press conference in New York, Vasily Nabienzia accused Ukraine of fabricating evidence and carrying out a false flag attack on its own people. While a growing number of countries are calling for a fresh wave of sanctions against Russia, President Biden's national security adviser, Jake Sullivan, said further measures coordinated between the United States and its European allies would be announced next week. With more details, here's Paul Adams. A weekend of appalling images and harrowing stories has triggered a fresh wave of international outrage and inevitably talk of more sanctions. No concrete announcements yet, but leaders agree new sanctions are needed. France's President Emmanuel Macron has called for more measures to target Russian oil and coal. Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz said Mr Putin and his supporters would, in his words, feel the consequences of what happened in Bucha. Meanwhile, the United States has for the first time seized a yacht owned by a Russian oligarch linked to President Putin under sanctions imposed following the invasion of Ukraine. The tango was boarded by U.S. federal agents in the Spanish port of Palma de Mallorca. The U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland made the announcement. Today marks our task force's first seizure of an asset belonging to a sanctioned individual with close ties to the Russian regime. It will not be the last. The U.S. Treasury Department says the luxury vessel is among assets linked to Viktor Vyksobyek, the billionaire head of a Moscow-based mining and metallurgy conglomerate. World news from the BBC. The United Nations Health Organization says almost the whole of the world's population is now breathing polluted air with serious implications for global health. Kat Wiener has this report. In its first major study in 15 years the WHO has made significant revisions to its air quality indicators after finding that air pollution affects health at much lower levels than previously thought. Its new results show that 99% of the world's population regularly inhale air so polluted that, in the words of the WHO, it puts their lives, health and well-being at risk. Particulate matter and nitrogen dioxide contribute to an increased risk of heart disease, stroke, lung disease, cancer and pneumonia. The South African government has lifted most COVID restrictions two years after it declared a national state of disaster to deal with the pandemic. President Cyril Ramaphosa said although the pandemic was not over, he was confident there were only better times ahead. He said it was important to boost the economy and create jobs. The US Senate will hold a confirmation vote on Katanji Brown-Jackson's nomination to the Supreme Court by the end of the week. The move follows a deadlock at the Judiciary Committee, which was split evenly after several hours of speeches. If Judge Jackson is confirmed as expected, she will become the first black woman to serve on the country's highest court. Staying with the United States, police in the U.S. state of California have arrested a man in connection with a mass shooting in the state capital, Sacramento. That left six people dead and a dozen others wounded. Police say Dondre Martin is a related suspect and faces charges of assault with a deadly weapon and illegal firearms possession. At least two gunmen fired more than 100 rounds in a busy area of Sacramento as bars were closing in the early hours of Sunday morning. Police have appealed to the public to share videos and any other evidence that could help identify the killers. BBC News.